So almost all of the eye tutorials you see on YouTube is about creating the eye itself and that's about it, especially this f***ing guy. They don't tell you about the other stuff going on on the eye. You can't just make an eyeball and plop it into someone's head and expect it to look good, right? So in this one I'm gonna show you how to create an eye from modeling the cornea and iris, adding textures and creating the shaders, all the way to making lacrimal coruncle and tear line to get the most realistic results. As always, if you wanna support the channel or download the practice files and real-time videos, check out my Gumroad and Patreon page. I'll be uploading this exact eye on both of them. You're welcome to use it anywhere you want. Let's get into it. First, shift A and make a UV sphere. Press R and rotate it 90 degrees. In the edit mode, while you're in face select mode, select the faces in the front and move it forward a bit. In the edge select mode, hold alt and click on the second row of edges and push them forward as well. In the vertex select mode, select the middle point and delete it. Back in edge select mode, while holding alt, click on the edges and press F to fill it. Press ctrl R on this one and move it closer to the next edge. Then by pressing S, scale it down. In the face select mode, select this face and press I to end set. Then push it forward as well. Press I again, then press M and center. I add another loop cut here by pressing Ctrl R. Then scale up this one as well. You can right click and shade it smooth to have a smoother shading on the sphere. In the face select mode, select all of the faces in the bump area. Shift D to duplicate. Press escape to place it back where it was. Then P and selection to separate it. Now select the new mesh. In the edit mode, select the front faces. Press O to enable proportional editing. Press G and scroll up or down on the mouse to get it to a size like this one then push it to the back press e to extrude inside one time then one more time now go to uv editing press a to select them all press u to unwrap in the shading tab add a new material shift a and add an image texture click on new and increase the resolution name it iris connect it to the base color in the texture properties click on new and open the iris texture you can download all of the textures from the link in the description select the eye go to texture paint tab on the left window, press N to bring up the right menu. In the texture section, put the mapping on a stencil. Click on image aspect to fix the size of the image. By holding right click, you can drag the image anywhere you want. Shift and right click and drag to the left or right to change the scale. Move it until it's fairly centered. Select the sphere and press edge to hide it so only iris remains. Then while your brush color is white, start painting the iris. If your iris texture is not fixed with the mesh, go to UV editing tab. In the edit mode, press Press A to select them all. Then in the edge select mode, while holding Alt, select the edges and scale them until iris texture position is fixed on the mesh. I wanted to make a pupil bigger, so I select the faces of the hole in the middle and scale them up. Also select this and push it forward. I'm gonna name this one iris, then name the other one cornea to avoid any confusion. Now select the cornea, go to edit mode, find the exact middle, hold Alt and click on the edge. Press U and mark seam. Press A to select them all, then U again for unwrap. Go to shading tab, add a new material, shift A and add image texture, click on new and name it Escalera, choose a white color, then connect it to the base color, go to texture paint tab, now in the tool menu, in the texture section, close the texture so we can paint freely, pick up a big brush with a low strength and start putting the color in the outer parts of the eyeball, the dark red color is way more intense in the back, try to maintain a smooth transition between the red and white color, don't get too close to the front cause we don't have that much redness in the front of this clearer unless your character is sleepy crying have an eye problem or whatever but in the normal condition is clearer is not red in the front maybe choose a light red color for the middle and smooth out any sharp transition you see After that, we gotta take care of the wings on this clearer. Fun fact, I handmade these wings in the Photoshop from lightning images. Believe it or not, they're really similar to clearer wings for some reason. You can download these PNGs for free, link in the description. Go to texture properties, click on new and open one of the wings PNGs. Click on image aspect to fix the aspect ratio, move it somewhere right here, choose a dark red color and start painting on it, move it somewhere else, rotate it, scale it to give it a bit of randomness, then paint it, rotate the 
camera and do that over and over until you get most of the angles. In the texture properties, click on the folder and open the second range texture. Click on image aspect again and do the exact same thing for this one as well. Just fill in the empty spots between the veins until we got a decent amount of veins all over the eye. This is not necessary but for more detail, close the texture, lower the size of the brush and add some more veins to give it more variety. Now it's time to make the shader. What we have to do here is to make the center of the mesh transparent so we can see the iris through it. To do that, go to shading tab, shift A and add gradient texture, shift A again and add color ramp. Connect the gradient to the color ramp. For this part, make sure you have the node wrangler add-on enabled. If you don't, go to edit, preference, add-on and search for node wrangler and enable it. Select the gradient texture, press ctrl T. Now we have these two nodes. Hold ctrl shift and click on the color ramp. This way we can see only our gradient color ramp on the mesh and nothing else. Now you can mess around with the color ramp. In the mapping, put 90 degrees on the Y axis. Then grab the black handle and drag it close to the right handle so we can almost reach the bump of the eye. Hold contour shift again and click on principal shader so we can have our shading back. Now connect the color ramp to the transmission. You can change the region of the transmission anytime you want by dragging these handles. You can see it's not transparent. To fix that, go to render properties in Eevee under screen space reflection turn on refraction. Also in the material properties, in the settings, turn on screen space refraction. Now you should be able to see the iris. To fix that, you need to decrease the roughness to zero. If you want to make your iris smaller or bigger, select your cornea and iris meshes. Press tab for edit mode, hold Z and go to wireframe mode. In the point select mode, select the front parts and scale them up or down. You'll probably get this black outline that you can fix by grabbing the handles of the color ramp and adapt it to the new size of the iris. Now I'm gonna add a HDRI map to the scene to see how the eye looks. Switch to the word nodes, shift A and add environment texture. Open any HDRI map you want, it doesn't matter. If you want mine, you can find the link in the description. Connect the environment texture to the output. As you can see, the eye is too clean and reflective. I'm gonna show you a simple trick to get rid of that. Go to this website, click on the image in the left and open the iris texture. On the right, click on load besides the diffuse and open the iris texture again. This way you can see the final results. It generates four different maps that you can mess around with the settings before exporting. Zoom into the object and while looking at the details, change the settings of each map until you are happy with the results. Once you're done, select each map and click on download. Do that for any of the maps you need. Again, click on the left image. This time, open the Sclera texture and load the Sclera texture on the diffuse as well. Now, when you zoom into the veins, you can see them bumping out and that's exactly what we want. Mess around with the normal settings until the vein bumps are visible but not harsh. Once you're done, again, download the maps one by one. Back to Blender, while selecting the cornea, grab the Sclera maps you just downloaded and drop it into shading section one by one. Shift A and add a normal map node. Connect the normal map we just imported to normal map node, then normal map to the normal. You see it's messed up, so it's really important to remember putting the map on non-color. Now would you look at that? It looks like actual veins. This part isn't necessary, but certainly help. Shift A and add an ambient inclusion. Drop it between the diffuse map and base color. Shift A again and add mix RGB and drop it behind the ambient occlusion node. Connect the ambient occlusion map you just downloaded to the color too. At the end, connect the specular map to the specular. Now select the iris. This time, drag and drop the iris map we downloaded and just like before, shift A and add normal map. Connect the normal map to normal map node, then to normal. This time, shift A and add displacement. 
it's not gonna work properly. Ontario Mesh have a decent amount of polygons. So in the modifier properties, add a subdivision modifier and increase the amount. Connect the downloaded displacement map to the height, then displacement to displacement. Now by changing the scale, you can change the intensity of these details. Don't forget to connect the specular map to the specular. Change the color of the subsurface and increase the subsurface amount. It definitely helped with the realism. And we are done with the eyeball. I think it came out decent. Now it's time for the other stuff. Bring your character. Select the full eyeball and scale it down. Go to edit mode and try to fit it inside the eye socket. It might be a bit annoying. Just jiggle it a bit until it looks right. Doing this in the edit mode makes the origin stays in the middle. And later you can add mirror modifier to have it on the other side. Remember to do it for both of these objects. Now it's time to make the lacrimal coronco. Shift A and add a plane. Go to edit mode. Scale it down and bring it to the other side of the eye. Enable snap and turn on project individual element. Select the poly build tool. Power your mouse on the outside of the plane and extrude it out. Do that over and over until you get to somewhere right here. Press ctrl R and shape the points so they sit on the mesh. Hold Z and go to wireframe mode. Select the edges of the plane and E to extrude to the back. In the modifier properties add a multi res modifier and subdivide. Also a mirror modifier to have it on the other side. Now select the lacrimal and go to sculpting tab. Using draw brush add a bit of bump here. Look at a bunch of reference for this one. Try to get the ups and downs on the surface using grab brush drag the side to the back to blend it more with the eye using crease brush add creases greatness pronounced lines Go to UV editing tab, press A to select them all, press U and unwrap. Go to shading tab, add a new material, shift A and add image texture. Click on new, choose a kind of white reddish color, name it Lacrimo Coronco and connect it to the base color. Go to texture paint tab, pick up dark red color and start putting color on it. You can also go to texture properties, open the same vein PNG and use it to add some veins to the lacrimal. Kinda helps the transition between the lacrimal and the sclera. Go to material preview mode to see the colors better. I think it needs much more color. So I delete the vein PNG, then I can paint on it again. In the material settings, increase the specular and decrease the roughness because it's quite reflective. Change the color of the subsurface to red and add a bit of subsurface. Now we gotta make the transition smooth. Shift A and add color ramp. Shift A again and add gradient texture. Connect the gradient to the color ramp and color ramp to alpha. Hold Ctrl Shift and click on the color ramp. Select the gradient texture and Ctrl T. Change the rotation until the black part is on the right. Make sure in the material properties, scroll down and in the settings, put the blend mode on alpha blend in shadow mode on alpha hash otherwise the transparency will not work hold ctrl shift and click on the principal bsdf to see our shader it's way too transparent so we gotta grab that white handle and bring it closer to the black one it is still too flat so i wanted to make it a bit more bumpy on the surface shift a and add a noise texture shift a again and add a normal map connect the noise to normal map and normal map to normal decrease the strength and increase the scale Pin back to the sculpting tab and added a bit more details using clay strip brush and crease brush. Moving on, I realized there's too much veins on the front of this clearer. To tone it down, select the cornea and go to texture paint tab. Using white brush, start painting out the veins you don't want. The job doesn't end here, because we have the exact same veins on the other maps too. On the right menu, on the top, you can see the maps. Switch to normal map. You can hover your mouse on the color and press E and click on whatever color the background is. Then start painting out the veins. If it's still Still different, change the color manually until it's the right color. Now it's time to make the tier line. Select your character. Go to edit mode. If your character has a correct topology, you should have something like this. In the face select mode, select the faces at the bottom of the eye. Shift D to duplicate, escape to place it back where it was, then P and selection to separate it. Now select the separated part. Go to edit mode. Correct any spot that overlapping with character's mesh. Select each point and drag it out of the mesh. Just a bit. Don't forget to hide the start and end point 
point of the tier line what we're gonna do here is to add a new material put the transmission on one decrease the roughness and increase the specular now we gotta make the surface bumpy so it looks more watery and wet to do that shift a and add noise texture then shift a and add displacement connect the noise texture to height and displacement to displacement mess around with the scale until it looks bumpy enough to fix the transparency go to material settings under the settings turn on a screen space refraction the edges are sharp we wanted to have a smoother transition with the mesh under it to do that we have to unwrap it go to uv editing press a to select all then u to unwrap now we gotta straighten up our uvs find the face in the middle select two of the points on the top press s to scale press y then press zero to align it with the y axis do that for the bottom two points as well now for the right and left points select the points press s this time press x then zero to align it with the x axis now you should have a perfect shape right click and click on follow active quads this way everything lines up with this one rotate it and place it somewhere now on the shading tab shift a and add a color ramp then add a gradient texture while selecting gradient texture press ctrl t to bring up the notes connect the gradient to color ramp then color ramp to alpha holding ctrl shift click on the color ramp and add a separate xyz drop it between the mapping and gradient connect the y to gradient and in the texture coordinates connect the ue to mapping instead of generated so it used the uv for gradient and the color ramp grab the black handle and drag it to the left so the outer edges of the plane have a nice transition between the white and black the black parts are gonna be transparent now hold ctrl shift and click on principle bsdf now in ev render mode you can mess around with the displacement map settings until it looks better than before and that was our tier line easy okay this should work pretty fine with ev but what about cycles if you want to use it with cycles go ahead and select the cornea ignore the ambient occlusion and connect the mix rgb straight to the base color if you added ambient occlusion to that one at the end i realized the iris needs to be a bit deeper so i select the edges in the hole and move it to the back a bit until it looks right yeah that's it this is our final eye wasn't really that hard was it tell me in the comments if you have any issues or any suggestion for the future videos and if you find this video helpful by any means like and sub would really help the channel also i made a discord server for some reason join in if you want to hang out share your work with others and stuff link in the description See you on the next one. Peace.